Today, we, we have with us Justin Jenkins, who is a graphic designer and a visual artist. And he will be presenting My Honest Purpose, what it means to be an, art, an artist. So please give a round of applause for Justin Jenkins. Go back to when I was 18, 17, 18. I was like, you know, I mean, I don't know if I was just like every one of y'all, but I was just kind of like a knucklehead. I was probably worse than y'all, just like BSing, terrible at school. I was terrible. I was horrible at school. I used to always get kicked out for the silliest of stuff. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to join like the Navy. I wanted to go be a mechanic, something like, something dumb, something that at 27, which is how old I am. I wouldn't even dream of doing now. Uh, I always like to draw, but I honestly, uh, it just wasn't cool where I was from. It wasn't like, yo, I'm an artist and that's like gonna work for you. Like you're gonna get a check or you're gonna like, somebody's gonna be like, yo, that's super tight. Eventually, I, I just kind of like ran out of options. I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do in life. Uh, I realized I didn't wanna go to the army or go be a mechanic. So I just applied to college, and one thing I always did, I always, ooh, I, I would always do these little drawings, mostly like rappers. I mean, this was like 2006. It was probably like the game, Jeezy. I think this is a pun. I'm trying to think all the people I used to draw back in the day, but that was it. I, I had in, no real experience in like graphic design. Uh, I, had, I mean, 18. You know, you think you do. You know, you have an experience in your life now, but you really have no like real experience in life, like. Yeah, I went to college. I only got accepted to like one college. I only applied to two, so my grades was terrible with it. The SATs, it was terrible. All that stuff was terrible. Um, I got in, and I was just winging it for 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 basically my my whole college career. I, I really uh, I I didn't have. I still didn't have that sense of direction. But finally, unlike high school, unlike where I grew up, it was like I finally was in this environment where I could at least start like exploring these ideas and exploring these options of like what it meant to be me. Uh, I mean, something big for me. I went to like a, a black, a historically black college. And uh, I mean, not to hype it up, but for minorities, any minority, it's like really tight to like go to this place and to like see people that look just like you, like see these same people, but like they're not trying to fight nobody. They're not trying to do too much craziness. I mean, I remember I went to school. The girls looked like from here to here. It was just insane. It was just like, it was like night and day. But it was the same people that I've been living around like my whole life. So it just, uh, it just, it, it was that type of environment. People wanted to learn. People wanted to explore what it meant to be them. And, and, and everybody did it in this like really like chill atmosphere. And yeah, it was there that I really started to, to begin to, to tie in my past experience with my present, and then what I, I guess I wanted it to be in the future. Um, I mean, and, and after graduation, I, I, I had these ideas I, of what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be and what I wanted my art to be. But I mean, real world just hits you, I hit you. And I mean, I'm always pretty honest. It's, it's, it's hard out here, even with the degree, you know? And I think. These were the makings when you when I got into the real world. These were the makings of how like my art tied into social justice. For the most part, you know, most artists we, we're kind of selfish. We just trying to paint something tight, trying to you know create something tight. Any of y'all like like streetwear like Huff and BBC? I mean, that's what I when I when I first came to New York, that's what I did. But I, I tell you the truth, man, ninety nine percent of that stuff ain't about nothing. It just looked tight. Cause you pulled something from some rap lyric you like or something you seen and you stood on a T and it looked hot to your mans, you know, Christian might hit me like, yo, that's tight, all right, nice. And I just like run with it. But it was right around that point that I really started to like, oh man, like, you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at counterparts, whether it be from a different race, I don't really wanna, you know, I try not to go there too much, but, you, in this day and age, you can go there all the time if you want. The disparities between race, the disparities between genders, the disparities between cultures, the disparity between economic classes, and you really start to see it. You know, I get out of school and I'm like, dang, yo, I cannot find no job. Like, I'm just like out here. I'm just like super, super broke. Like, and I'm just looking around like, wow, these other people, they have opportunities. Like, they have like, something's not right. Like, and 
it's one thing to know things in theory. Y'all, y'all, y'all know it's like racism and uh, gender inequality. Y'all know these things for sure. Like we all know these things, and it's more, it's more in theory. I'm not, I'm not gonna say everyone knows these things in theory, but it's one thing to know it in theory, like to see it in a book and to see it on Fox Five, or to, you know, to to hear. Y'all know y'all Walter Scott's kid was some. Um, Oh God, I can't think of this. This the man today in Cincinnati got shot. Uh, just, just over by a campus policeman. It was like the weird, the weirdest. Like somebody who just like, man, you you probably was just the dumbest kid in school, bro. He was just like, why well, just shoot him? Shoots him for nothing. You know these things in theory, though. It's the next thing to like see them in real life, and by real life, I mean like your real life. To like go to college and uh, to, to, to know that you're an educated man or you know, an educated woman, and then for a cop to like harass you and like hassle you and do something crazy, and you're just like, wait, you know, like why? To go on an interview and you've got like an ethnic name, like I got a homie Jaquan, like to go on an interview and like you don't get a, you don't get a position, when they see you, they, they're, they're looking kind of weird at you, they're like, oh, uh, oh man, you weren't what I thought you were, like oh, uh, you might not fit our mold. And then you start realizing it. Now that's that's not to say that opportunities are like super super limited, but it's to say what I learned right then is that you got to make your own opportunity, and that's a part of social justice right there. I mean, I was in I just got out of school. I was still in North Carolina at the time, uh, and me and my friend we decided to start this uh, this 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 clothing line on some on some streetwear stuff. Same as Huff. I was nowhere near as good because I was pretty trash at design at this point. Um, but it, it was it was it was something to do. And at that time in North Carolina, everybody was you know they go to parties. Everything had this had this direction that was was based on these on on old traditions. So you know you you, you couldn't like you couldn't a lot of cats wouldn't really like listen to to, to rock. And not to say I listen to rock. It was doing all just a whole bunch of alternative stuff. But it's, it's, for me, it was to open their mind to the possibility that if you want to, you can. Ever since then, we, 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 we sold a bunch of t-shirts. Uh, we sold a bunch of clothes in general. We would throw a bunch of events, throw our shows all, uh, all over the, 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 the city that we were living in, which was another, it was uncommon. I remember we threw our art show and it was like the first, uh, like the first show thrown by like young African Americans in what they call they call the art district in uh, the city. It was, the city was Winston Salem, North Carolina, and um, I remember just being like, "Wow!" Like before, th to think first. I mean, obviously it gashes your head a little bit, but really more importantly, it's like, "Wow!" Nobody thought to do this. Like, like they've been throwing art shows there for probably a quarter century or more. No one had thought to do this, and it just changing using something to change like the way people think, whether it's yourself or whether it's the people around you. I mean, uh, fast forward to coming to New York, which is uh, my, my little t-shirt thing took me there. Um, and I realized that I, I wanted to keep the same movement alive. And, and here in New York, it's you guys have access to stuff that some people, you know, kind of like never will a little bit. You, you can, a lot of people in a lot of other places don't, but I came here and I realized like, oh, there's people here, there's young kids here that still don't have access, that there's still a, a, a huge disparity like between same things. A big thing is race, genders, cultures, economic class. The, the, the rich in New York is, I've, I've seen it, it's next level. You could be, I done been in a Marc Jacobs show where people just like, you know, insane, just like it's just full suits. They just, just came from Nantucket or whatever, wherever rich people go. Nantucket, uh, uh, what's I don't know some other some other rich places. And then I've seen people living on food stamps, living on EBT, not necessarily even getting out of getting out of their borough, not even having, not even feeling like they have access to go into another place. And when I think about it, I, I think, you know, what can I do like to change that? What can what can 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 you do to change that? I mean, we all don't necessarily have like, you know, I guess uh skills that would would 
that would seem impressive to some, or that we would we feel might be impressive to someone. Growing up, I felt like being able to draw like wasn't a tight thing. I just didn't like. I used to like. I it wasn't even something I broadcasted. It's like if you caught me like doodling in class, I'd just be like, all right, well, you know, this is what it is. Like, leave me alone, kind of thing. Like, it it was something for years that I I took for granted, and now I'm realizing like I can use this same thing to. It, if nothing else, on the smallest scale, like broaden someone's mind. That was actually one of the points me and Christian uh, talked about was uh, making sure that even if you do something, and even if it's on like a small scale, like it's it, feeling confident and knowing that like it it will still impact someone. And currently, uh, I, obviously, as I was introduced, I'm a professional designer. I work for this like yeah, techie company. It's kind of, it's like whatever to be honest. It's 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 pretty tight. We work with really uh, cool clients. Actually, I just got an email before I came up here. We're gonna do some like work with Burberry. I, I what I do professionally. I mean, it, it's 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 very it's very corporate and it's very professional, and I'm I'm known for that. I guess throughout the the, the design industry, whether it's designing uh, the apparel. Uh, UI, UX, like web stuff, all kind of stuff that's boring. But what I really want to talk about is my like my personal art because that I'm not as known for. But that goes into my point with about you being a recording artist. Let's say you sing. Uh, let's say you just local around here. You you know what I'm saying. Let's say like, matter of fact, let's just say you you're known in Harlem. Like that's what you do. Like you're the singer in Harlem, and you, you maybe never really like get too far past Harlem. Or you never really get too far past New York. What something I want to like uh, just put you know put on you guys and, and, and let you guys know is that you know, even if you if if some if one person came and heard your music got on your SoundCloud that's where you would probably put your stuff now your SoundCloud and liked your stuff and it's like yo this was inspiring to me you know or like yo this this vibe this vibe made me want to create that's important. And that right there is social justice, because you have no idea. I mean, that's the power of the internet, and that's the power of the world we live in today. You post, I mean, if you go on my Tumblr, it's just like, it's all type of 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 of, of, of work it, it, dealing in uh, symbolism and uh, iconography, and you know it. Every so often, I, I remember when I first got on my personal work, I used to be like, man, you know, like, I'm not getting the response I thought I was getting. I know I'm flame. I know I'm tight. Like, I know I'm this. And this is like, oh, uh, you know, like, I'm not getting, like, you know, I don't know, like 30,000 notes or something. But every, every so often, it would be, like, one or two people, especially when I first started, just be like, yo, yo, this is hot. You're like, I get what you're doing here. And then it just, like, grew, and it continued to grow. And now it's like, even if it's not, thousands of people or millions of people I know that like what I'm doing in my art is like touching a couple people and that's important I mean because that's how it starts that's grassroots like what you want to do whatever you want to do you want to do it honestly you want to like this is why I did it like this is why I'm doing it and believe in yourself like don't let don't let I I, I know we all feel the pressure for getting likes or getting retweets and yada yada but I mean that at the end of the day that don't really mean crap like it really don't real life is the tightest thing that's ever gonna happen like for sure and I know like I mean not necessarily saying y'all but it people have like whole identities they be like Neo in the Matrix with it they go in there and they could fly they could like you know kick kick somebody down the floor they can't you know in real life they could just be somebody at their mom house eating hot pockets and toaster strudels and they draws, not paying no bills, just kind of like a dweeb a little bit. And be confident in knowing that whatever it is you do will impact people, and that that impact right there is like social justice. Like it's at least a, 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 a drop of water in the ocean, and that matters. Like that for sure matters because, you know, I know it's cliche, I know it's corny, but like that drop of water in your sound, you hit somebody on their SoundCloud, somebody hit you on your SoundCloud, and it's like, yo, you really inspired me. But as long as you're doing something like with the honest effort to like express yourself and make the world a better place, it's like a super tight thing. And it'll work eventually, like whether it's today or tomorrow. All right, so I guess maybe what the easier way to do is me explain some of the stuff I'll be doing.
Um, uh, just, just do it. Just genuine. Uh, so, like, um, all my work, my my handle. It's, it's corny, but if you're if you're an artist, get you a handle. Especially if you're finna do some devious stuff, which I'm a, a fan of doing. Uh, kind of deep. Stop right there with that little the little girl. Yeah. It's been a sucky year as far as just police brutality, and uh, I kind of found these po posters to be like propaganda. Like I don't do any y'all want to be cops before I continue this. <laughs> Word. Right on, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, nah, I kind of found it to be a little, little bit. I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying law enforcement's not, not needed, but I mean, you know, not to go fully into that, all of that. But like, I mean, always remember that law enforcement is an agent of a corrupt system. And I mean, that's, I want to say that's my opinion, but it's really not an opinion. It's really fact. Like, we're only 50 years removed from someone that looks like you being able to date someone that, you know, I don't know, looks like uh, Sarah Michelle, no, no, it's a bad example. Miley Cyrus, you couldn't, 50, 50 years ago, less than 50 years ago, if you would've did that, you would've been in jail. Like, you know what I mean? And it would've been some cop that would've had to put you in jail. He would've been doing his job, he would've been doing the right thing, being a good cop, but he would've put you in jail for something that is just immoral as I don't know what. So, I mean, always that's always what I think about, and with this, it was just like, it's just kind of like being silly. Do not join the NYPD with my hand all over it just because, yeah, like do something else with your life. I don't know if being a cop and like harassing the citizens, I don't know, and just being some municip municipal officer is like, like the best way. If I wouldn't do it. And that was me using my art to try and like affect some type of, of, of social change, some type of social justice. And it was crazy because obviously I try and stay anonymous. I'm like, not like taking a picture next to my, like, hey, what's up, this is me, I did this. But it was crazy because the more work I've done, the more people, especially around the, the neighborhood I live, with, I live in, I live in Bushwick. Damn, this is so hard, I don't be talking to mics. Uh, the more they know my handle and somebody hit me up, like, yo, man, I seen that, that was, you know, that was really tight. Like you someone speaking up for like the youth and like saying what we're really feeling right now. And that goes back into the point I was making earlier. It, I don't necessarily need like Time or Time Magazine or New York Magazine to come and be like, oh man, you're doing some really great work. It really takes that one person and that one person who you know that relates to you and sees where you're coming from. You've made, like, I know I've made a difference. Like I've, I've like helped someone. So that's like a really tight thing. My question is, has it has your art related to your family, and how does it relate to your personal life? It's heavy. Uh, to my family? All right, so I learned how to draw from my from my pops, kind of. It was like uh, when I was young, uh, we would have, like, these little drawing competitions, and I guess, I mean, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of, how, do, how does it really relate to my family? Um, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a, 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 like, a deep answer, I think. I think only way I really related to my family is this is, I mean, this is my way to provide for my family. My family, I mean, other than my mom's who's like pretty successful in what she does, like the rest of my family, they kind of like, you know, they just out here living. My uncle, he kind of like a mess up, he kind of like a screw up. Uh, you know, most of my cousins are older than me and they kind of, you know, they on got their kids, you know, they ain't really, it's just no, it's, 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 it, we're all kind of living mediocre lives, in my opinion. And so how my art relates to my family is like, this is my ticket to like better our lives. Like a lot of us ain't been on planes. We ain't been, you know, we might've been to the South when we was little, we ain't been to the West Coast. We don't go on trips together because we can't afford to do that. This is art and, and my passion for this and, and my skill with this and my continuing skill it's how I feel like I'm gonna better my family. You know, I didn't really, like I said, I wasn't really too psyched off my childhood. It's like, art is gonna be how like, I make sure that like my kids have like a super tighter life than me. Like, art is like, art's gonna do that. Art's gonna, art done got me, you know, yeah, I don't care, but art done got me the pretty chick already. So it's like, that's one and then art done got me a little bit of money. So that's another one. So art, art is how I'm gonna like better, better my family. And I think that's what it means to me. It means like hope. Like going to the second part of your question, it's just like 
before it, I didn't really have none. Like I said, I was just like, man, you know, kind of like whatever. What I would see would be whatever. Like the homies, if I go back now, the homies I grew up with, it's like just a whatever. It's like a real like whatever vibe, you know. They just live and live. And like I'm not trying to do that. Art was the first time I was like, oh, man, you know, like all these things. I'm a big movie fan. All these, um, all these things that I would see in these movies and on TV shows, like, yo, this could get me one step closer to like living like that. And I'm sure like when I get there, even I got there now, you know, I had all these ideas of what New York was like and I got here and, you know, it is like I had this romantic view of New York and I got here and I was like, oh, you know, it is super tight and you can go to a super like tight party, but also you're like going to see like a, a, a bum like take a dookie like right on the platform and it's like, oh, man, movies don't really show you that stuff. But I mean, art is definitely the way that I can like better my life. It like represents hope and that's, I don't know. Okay. Um, you brought up earlier that your first event displaying art in your town or your city mm -hmm. um, was kind of an eye-opening experience just because you, um, the fact that no one had ever thought of doing this in that area and um, with this kind, like, this kind mm -hmm. of people, racial minorities. Um, and then you also brought up a deep lack of motivation that you experienced when and those around you experienced growing up in your um, community. Um, and I think this is pretty common in racial minority communities. Uh, this lack of motiv motivation throughout. Um, so do you think that this specific lack of motivation um, seen and experienced through uh, racial minority communities is l related to social injustice and the enforced cultural idea that people of color cannot really make change or impact? Yes. Yes, man. Like, like I said, I went to a black college and um, it was the first time I had met, I had been around Yo, all right, so I remember I went there, I go there, and I'm 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 fresh. Uh I'd i I'd, I hadn't i I grew up in New Jersey. So I get there and all my friends they crack all these jokes, they still to this day, like, yo, I was on campus and my mind was blown. I'm looking like, oh yo, somebody's like no chicks don't wear weave, like they don't give me equal hair, like yo, this dude isn't like looking like he's finna punch somebody in like the throat. Like, this is crazy. Like we're going to a party and like nobody's getting beat up or like I didn't see all type of stuff, like all type. I'm just like, oh, this is like, wow, like, oh, this is a real thing. And then it it, it was great. I had I was like, I was like, I don't want to say naive, but I was very optimistic. I was like, oh wow, you know, there is a place where like, black people can go and, and minorities can go, and we could be like, you know, celebrated and there's opportunities for us. And then I came here, and um, I worked in streetwear. Which was uh, which is is very diverse. Like for any, you know, it's very diverse. It's not a lot of money though. So I leave streetwear. This goes into her question and just like being more. I had to be. I I became more fluid because I did a lot of uh, of corporate type design and doing corporate design. I worked with corporate people. It was the first time I truly felt like a minority. It's like like I said. It's one thing to see something in theory to know it in theory. I know I'm a minority. I think. Blacks, we make up like 12.3% of the population. I I, re I knew that on paper, but to be in a room full of like white people and you're just like, yo, like we have nothing in common. To like, I mean, and, and in our office where I work right now, it's like, it's a huge TV and it's on CNN all the time. And obviously, you know, it's been on CNN. Uh, Freddie Gray, uh, 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 Michael Brown, uh, Eric Garner, Sandra Bland. You just been seeing all these, and I'm just like, you know, we don't talk about it, no, we don't say nothing, you know. They're talking about their trips to Montauk and the Hamptons, and I'm just like, yo, like, wow, like, wow, like, not only, not only, I, 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 I know I said that. I'm gonna start. I know I said that I saw, grew up with lack of like seeing like lack of motivation, but the truth is, there's, look at y'all, y'all here right now. Like, we didn't necessarily do this when I was young, but like, there's my places and minority communities all over where there's kids like y'all that are like out there like it's so it's 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 not necessarily like this this it's only in minorities but it's just the opportunities these people i work with they you know their the grandparents one of the guys i work with his name's bert jarko it don't get no yeah word it don't get no wider than that bert jarko uh his his grandpa uh, his great grandpa went to the University of Wisconsin, where he met his grandma, and then you know the father went to Wisconsin or some one of those really nice schools, and then he went. It was it was, it 
it's been that way for a long time. My grandpa was born in 1916 uh, in a town called Homerville, Georgia, which at the time was most known for lynching, for having a, a swamp where they would lynch blacks and then dump the bodies. He dropped out of school to third grade, and he'd been working ever since third grade, yo, like the third, that's crazy, right? Like the third grade. He said, he told me a story about how he met his father. He said, one day his father came in, I don't know if this is true either, I don't wanna, don't quote me on this part, but he said he came in, in the town, walking barefoot with a guitar, sung him a song, sat him on his knee, and then like walked off into the sunset like John Wayne, and like he never saw him again. Like that was his only interaction. So, I mean, systematic racism and oppression, is it's real. It's, it's so real, and we're playing catch up. And that goes back into my, the, the never die, the, 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 the attitude. Like, I have, I, I kind of walk around with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder because you kind of need it. Like, I don't want to project my stuff onto y'all, but you do kind of need it because you're always going to be playing catch up. Like, whether you, you know, whether you want to admit it, I mean, listen, I, I try and be cool, you know, with, with everybody, friends of all nationalities, genders, sexualities. You got to be, you got to, you got to be just as, as much of a design. You got to be fluid out here. You can't be, you can't be closed minded, but you always got to remember like, yo, you are playing catch up. Like in my school, we were giving like, we were given like the worst books. Like they were literally like falling apart and like had little like, uh, little, I don't know, I was gonna say something crazy, but had like little drawings of crazy stuff, you know, you know. So uh, yeah, I mean, always know that you're gonna be playing catch up, and all, but always know that like, you can do it. Like, if you persevere, like for sure you can do it. Yo, y'all was real. Thank you, Harlem.